Rito, a company known in the film world for their re-release of plastic cameras like the Ultra Wide and Slim, the 3D, and Kodak's licensed half-frame camera. But these mad lads wanted to go a little bit deeper on the film iceberg. So they've recently released four film stocks. And to be 100% honest with you, I like them more than Cinestill. Rito D100, T200, Amber 400, and T800. Just like Cinestill, these are all based on Kodak's Vision 3 cinema film. Rito T800 is Cinestill 800T, and so on and so on and so on. Matter of fact, I would bet somebody else's X-Pan on the fact that Cinestill's next film will probably be some 200-speed tungsten-balanced film. It just makes sense. I know I just threw a lot at you there, but just like me and your mom, we ain't stopping yet. These are remjet removed film that are loaded into 27 exposure rolls. It's an odd number for film, right? And to be 100% honest with you, I have actually never gotten 27 shots on a roll. So what gives? Two words, disposable cameras. This is where this film first started. T-800 and Amber 400. Those two stocks were preloaded into disposables, so there is 27 shots worth of material there, but unless you load this film in total darkness, you'll usually get around 25 frames. I've seen a lot of people make videos and talk about the disposable cameras, but that's by far the weakest thing here, I believe. I at least to me. I mean, why? Why judge the film off a of cheap plastic lens? And I mean, disposables aren't great anyways. Well, not to fear because that's why I'm here. I'm reviewing the entire line of films. So I'm going to be splitting this up a little bit, show you examples, wax poetically about my opinions. And then at the end, I will give you a rating on the great scale of Devon. Number one, Rito D100. Yeah, this stuff ain't for me. Overall, I find the colors of D100 interesting, and this is by far the best shot I got on the single roll I used. The problem here lies less with Rito or even Cinestill. Cinestill 50D isn't my thing either. I think it's the base stock for this, the Kodak Vision 50. It all just shows up really muddy to me. I mean, lower ISO films tend to be really detailed. Smaller the grain, lower the ISO, usually higher sharpness, but not here. I've never been able to figure it out. I've only shot one roll of Cineso 50D and only one roll of Rito D100, and I think that's where things are gonna stay for a long time. Spending money on muddy looking film just isn't the vibe. Rito D100 gets a firm two out of 10 for me. Number two. Rito T200. It can only go up from here, right? Well, not by much. Yell at me all you want about shooting tungsten balanced film in daylight, but Rito's examples were outside in the sun. For the uninitiated, films are often color corrected in the emulsion themselves for different lighting scenarios. T200 obviously wasn't meant for the sun. It was meant for tungsten, which is what the T stands for. Now that I've given a full explanation about why the colors are gonna be a little off here, I'm going to completely complain about the colors. I had to edit these scans heavily to get something I'm happy with and somehow the green cast even survived that first round of editing. It's crazy. If my compositions hadn't been absolute fire, I probably wouldn't have saved anything from this roll. Showed it to you guys and into the trash it went. But of course, your boy comes through. This film also suffers from muddy film disease in the same way that the 50s or D100 do. Again, I can't really blame Rito for that, Hearing people talk about Kodak Vision 3 T200, uh, it's pretty much the similar story. It's 
not that great. And yeah, I don't know, dude. Rito T200 gets a solid two out of 10 for me. Number three, Rito Amber 400. <laughs> Is this getting old yet? Let me know down below. Are you starting to doubt Rito now? You fool. Remember when I said Amber 400 and T800 were the two films Rito first put in disposables? Yeah, well, that was for a reason. Out of the four, they are by far the best. And this video has officially taken its heel turn. God, why can I not stop doing the chills voice now? <laughs> Number 15, film stocks are fun to review. Amber 400 comes out the gate swing. Tall, handsome glass of water in the drought that were these two last films. Beautiful warm tones that I just straight up don't get from Sinistel 400D. 400D can often come off as aggressively warm or normal, depending on how you're scanning it and correcting it. Rito's Amber 400, though, comes through in all situations. Sharpness is there. Colors look exaggerated, but far from alien, at least for me. And the most important part about a film, when I review it, is the magic factor. The magic factor is when you just vibe with a film stock and you know 99% of the time, you'll walk away from a certified banger off of that roll. Like mentioned before though, the only part that sucks is you only get about 25 shots of this stuff. I mean, look at these photos and tell me this film is not a certified classic. Rito Amber 400, which I just looked at the box and the box says D 400, but fuck you, it's Amber 400 in my head and my heart. It's a lovely seven out of 10. Number four, Rito T800. This film probably has the biggest shadow to crawl out of. Sinistil 800T, one of the most well-known film stocks on the planet. If you've ever seen a douchebag, beanie-wearing photographer's gas station shot, it's probably on Sinistil 800T. I, I, I would know. I mentioned this film once before in my very first video on Templeton, and I'll say what I said there. I enjoy this take a lot more than Sinistel's. I don't know if it's the more pronounced grain that gives it a distinctive character, the ever so slightly off-cast colors. I don't know, again, that magic factor comes into play really big here. Plus, just recently I took a shot that I absolutely fell in love with on this. Take a look. I mean, look at it again. Like, seriously. Go back, like, the arrow button is a five second key. Just hit that until you're back there. Look at it again. Just like with Sinistil 800T, these films aren't the sharpest, but I knew that going into it. And even though I would usually knock the lack of sharpness, I feel like everything else kind of makes up for it. Character has a big part of film. Hell, it's why we shoot it over digital. And this film brings it to the table. Again, the only thing holding this back is there is no 36 exposure version and only get it in that weird quote unquote 27 shot roll. Rito's T800 gets an astonishing 8 out of 10 from me. Rito 
Rito's line of films are a mixed bag, but like I said earlier, that's not really on Rito. Working with what they had, I absolutely believe Sinistel cannot hold a candle to any of these. Rito's biggest downfall here though is their price per shot. I've not talked a lot about the price of this film because God knows with film prices, tomorrow they will go up next day and the next day and uh, the next day and the next day and the next day and uh, you get about 25 exposures for anywhere from 13 bucks a roll all the way up to 19. In my opinion, that's way too much, but I kind of also feel that's just how film is now. I still stand by all of my ratings, like price was fully taken into account here. Would I recommend you pick these up though? Really only the Amber 400 and T800. It's expensive for what you get, but the magic that comes out of these film stocks is something else. It's worth it for me and I'll occasionally pick up a couple of rolls, but it won't replace anything in my film repertoire, my everyday grabs, or even things I really want to experiment with that often. As soon as you can buy this film and the standard amount of shots, it's over for Cinestone. And I will be waiting for that day and watching what Rito does next. And so should you.